What's up, y'all? It's your boy Kev on stage. Listen, no new main episode this week, but you do have a bonus from Patreon to watch, which hopefully is new to you. Uh, so check that out, and we'll see you next time. Peace. And five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's Magic Angel. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, bangers, bangers. All 2023. Once again, Bob Brothers European Leg tickets are on sale this week, starting on Friday. Um, and also, there's very few tickets left to the Bob Brothers in America outside of Phoenix. And wow. Congratulations. Yeah, God is good. Amen. Phoenix and Cleveland. You guys are got plenty of time there. Inspectrum is really uh, sponsoring the tour. Yeah. That is huge. Speak yeah. on that, Kev. I really. am really I happy out. for you all, for real. Genuinely, that's, that's no fire. sarcasm. That's, that's fire. Uh, they were like, hey, we want to deepen this relationship. What do you guys think about sponsoring the tour? Playing some videos in between the shows or before the show of the music video. And I was like, yes. Press That's release right. and all that. So it was amazing. Shout out to Spectrum. Congratulations. Congratulations on the all your hard work. best internet ever. Nothing ever goes wrong with it. Uh, That's no. arguable. That's not true at all. Spectrum was perfect in all its ways. It's all right. Nice. Now, me and Angel have been married for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Almost 40 Josh, years collectively. You just had your anniversary. Yes. Happy 19 anniversary. 19 years 19. yesterday. Wow. Uh, Josh is in a committed relationship. Amen. So Gary. collectively, this group has been out of the dating pool for a while. Yep. I've been in the dating pool since 1999. Mm. Okay. Wow. Josh was a sweet little six-year-old boy. Wow. Six-year-old baby. Also, uh, I realized Buster Rhymes is about the age between me and you is the age between me and Buster Rhymes. I just found that interesting during the BT. 10 spot? Oh. He's 11 years older than me. Okay. Really? He seems so much older because I was young and he was a grown man. But as we Everybody. grow, Everybody, yeah, seems, everybody so seems so much older. older. And they also looked older. But anyway, so we ain't in the dating pool. So this TikTok went viral, and um, B. Gibson, Patreon producer, <laughs> sent this in the in the doc and said, "What is going on in these single streets? Women are eating butt, butt on the first date." Now I was like, "Women eating butt?" So let's listen to this woman Jesus. describe her thing, and then literally on the opposite end of the spectrum of the dating pool is the next story. Hey, no more rim jobs on the first date because it is a special kind of hurt no to more. have a stranger's butthole in your mouth and them not text you back like i'm just a little offended right now somebody called it a rim and run <laughs> <laughs> you know she's a white woman because she says rim job that is a black people don't use the term rim job we get eating butt eating, eating groceries booty. eating booty Andrew, you got some on your lip oh thank you uh it's from that <laughs> oh! Oh! so now when i saw this i was like okay I, I know I'm far removed from the dating pool. I didn't realize anyone would eating butt on a first date is wild. crazy. It's wild. It's wild. I don't even know, like, because especially because people be going on first dates from apps. Mm -hmm. It's even different than like before when we went on first dates. We have back in our day, we back, met at the library. Back before the internet, we used to get to like kind of get to know the person in face to face, so we can kind of see hygiene and stuff like that. And we still wasn't giving sloppy toppy on the first date. I remember when having sex on the first date was taboo. Oh, now they're like, we well, don't even have to be considered a yeah, date. Now it's a game. This was a meetup. Apparently, that's what the hit of a hinge and a Tinder. It's, some of them DTF. are just some That's are just DTF it. hookups, right? Okay, you oh. were all adults here, you know. Mm. But eating butt stink. I not only have I've never eaten butt on the first date, I've never eaten butt. Let's start there. I don't even eat chitlins. That's how far away. I don't even eat ham. That's how far away from booties I have been. You ain't listening to Sukihana. That's your problem. Listen, oh. Marcus don't want me back there, first listen. of all. First of all, listen, I love that man enough that if he wanted that, I'd be like, well, we're going to have to talk about it. You need that butt? Yes. We're, oh, we're going to talk about it. This is going to cause an argument. Yes, but Marcus would also snap my neck and kill me if that ever happened. That's how much I love that man. There ain't no part of that man's body that I would not put my mouth on. But this is after we've been together for over 20 some odd years. Well, the thing is, when you're in a committed relationship, you can, you can, listen, a butt's gonna stink every day of the week. Yeah. But at least you can say, okay, well, my butt ain't, all right, now what's the best scenario? 
<laughs> in the shower, that thing can have just been washed in the moment you could lick in the in the it's shower. Still butt. Right? Still butt. But it's more palpable. First date butt, you've been driving. Like you, from oh, the you moment you, on your lip now too. From, from the moment you butt. leave the shower, <laughs> from the moment you leave the shower, every second that you leave, that butt getting back to maximum stinking. Oh yeah, the butt every second that butt like I'm gonna be back to full strength. It don't take much for your butt getting back to full strength stinking. Imagine if your armpits had booty holes, because that's oh, what this is. It is the. We always together. Plus, there is sup there is just fumes and juices exiting on a regular basis. Like the Santa solidarity. That is, and we don't lick armpits. We show sure don't. And there's no booty hole. Yeah, I heard you, people be getting their knees licked, the back of the knees. Mel is Mitchell that? on the jokes on you pod said people eat knees, back of knees, the the badugu or something good? like that. <laughs> The what? The, the, it was like the Badagucci or the Badussi. The Badussi? The Badussi? The Nussi. The Nussi. I said eat knees. <laughs> Does that feel good? Well, you know when sweat trickles down your leg in the summer, it'd be tickly. Mm -mm. But I girl, oh, really? Go and lick my knee, girl. Get Listen, in there and lick my knee. We're going on our honeymoon uh, trip in about three weeks. I'm going to be like, let's try it. Not honeymoon, anniversary. Lick the back of my knees. Let me see what that feel like. But anyway, somebody said it's wonderful. Getting the knee eat, the back of the knee is a zone. Okay, listen. The <laughs> nussy. <laughs> is that what knees is? The nussy? The nussy. With I don't know. With a, no, okay. with a silent K. You got to keep that silent K. Knussy. Knussy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna say, Marcus. Let's see. Let's try that. You know Bye. how embarrassing it is to drive home with butt on your lips. Crusty. And to hit that person like, when are we seeing each other again? And never get I mean, hit I, back? I, I could imagine they probably washed their mouth off after. How, first of all. But they had to drive home with stinking lip. For men Maybe who get their booty ate, how do you, how is that? Are your legs up? Are it's got to be vulnerable. Is it like that? I have a baby. I wasn't sure if it was like that or if it's like or that. <laughs> either, either way, it's so vulnerable. It, it is very vulnerable. I ain't got my butt ate. I would not you ask it of my wife. If your wife, if Melissa was like, no. I want to try, you would tell her no? I, you like Marcus. Get out of there. Marcus is like, do stay not away. Do, I, Coochie, good. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I don't want my butt. I don't. I, I don't. There's. I don't have the freedom. Mm. Of that toxic masculinity. No. <laughs> now, Gooch, you can tickle Gooch. You tickle the Gooch, 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 Gooch. Tickle a little. The landing strip's fine. Don't go down to that door. That's this. The about landing that door. strip is a little gray zone. You be like, all right, Bob, still a man. Hoo -hoo, but I like it. But you know what I'm saying? I'll still fight. That butt, that booty, get no. It just you're so vulnerable. You're so vulnerable. I don't. You're... I don't. I don't think even if it's one of those things. Even if it were enjoyable, I could never find out. <laughs> I, I couldn't. Like, I couldn't free myself exactly to I allow like myself men to enjoy be having it. a hard time just freeing themselves. I don't know what type of drug Marcus would have to be on. I like, but I mean, willingly be on a drug, not being roofied. I don't know what type of Molly. How strong it would have to be Molly with all capital letters. It you have to see Marcus Molly. doing this. Oh yeah, he would have to be opening his butt cheeks while walking. <laughs> No, I pick with him all the time because he is so like, stay away from back there. He don't oh. want me to. I even, I'll smack his butt. He'll be like, no, no, don't touch me back there. And I'm not even kink. I don't even know if that's a kink, but I'm not kink I'm sharing. Sure kink. Give him five margaritas is what somebody said. <laughs> if, you let, if you like your butt eight, enjoy. Mm -hmm. But to do it on a first date is kind of, it's personal. Like you don't know, That's you don't crazy. know that person's hygiene yet. I know, and hygiene is a big part of it. You it get is infected. A, you could literally get herpes about your mouth. You could get all types of nasty venereal diseases Forget on diseases, your face. Diseases, you might catch a stray. What if you catch a two to the eye? Listen, especially if you got curlies back there, them things might have held on to something that didn't make it to the toilet. Oh Lord! Truly, oh, truly. Innocent. I ain't gonna hold you, even as a man. Uh, E Overall, we don't have the best track record for no, hygiene. Don't. Streaks in your drawers. St <laughs> we don't have the best 
high, so a, a person you haven't met, that's kind of like crazy. That like, is. That's kind of, that's like, man. And listen, this is what, listen, about to be married 20 years <laughs> next year. And somebody said something really good about marriage. I want, I want to read it to y'all because it was so good. Oh, I would have it. to take advantage of Marcus. Go I was going to say, while you're finding it, that girl said never again. I know. <laughs> never again. How she many times, how she's many she's times a, have you she, done this? She's a recurring uh, felon with this, man. <laughs> how many this, times she got ghosted with, with butt on her lip? <laughs> now you're at home with this butt This must butt. be her calling card. Dog. Likes to eat booty hoes. I'm going to eat your butt on the first day. This uh, says, it says booty with like this emoji? Just. I text Jarrell to do a Bobby Jones impersonation two hours ago. He just texted me back. What? Sure. When? Oh, my God. Jarrell. He ain't never ready. All right. Where's you? So this was in reference to a video, um, and I don't know what the woman said, but he said, you never stop growing. I heard 50s and 60s look completely different than your 40s. The goal is to find a partner who you want to grow to uncomfortably and comfortably mm. with over decades. There's so much more on the line with divorce than just emotion. That was Mel Smith. And I think that's the key. You want to grow uncomfortably and comfortably. You being married forever, which is our plan, mm -hmm. you are a different person, right? You and Marcus been together since y'all was what age? I 20 was something? 24. He was 21. Oh, that's right. You robbed that cradle. Don't worry. Uh, I got that baby. 20. Oh. 21. Oh, he was 22. Excuse me. Mm. 22. Cougar. And you'll share that half up, half down. Mm -hmm. And that white diamond. Yes, I be here. But uh, so, you know, you grow with that person. You make choices. You make commitments, whatever. But on the first date, to like, where do you go from there? Like, if you eat butt on the first date, when people eventually say, "Ah, oh, where's the spice gone?" What else can you do if you if if you ate that man's butt on the, the first date? The spice is on your tongue. <laughs> That's, that's the, where that's, the spice that's the is heat. gone. That's from that corn. It's on your tongue. It's on your lips. That's always been Marcus's thing. He's like. We all we got to make sure we leave room to travel someplace <laughs> right. in inside of sex. We got to leave room. If we start adding all types of crazy stuff, it right. what what is going what is it going to take then to bust on up? Where, if we didn't add it all types of at what cost? Yeah, all types of toys <laughs> and instruments and and contraptions. Yeah. What are we going to do at 50? And what we, we still, you know, trying to smash. <laughs> it's very much. I don't. I, you know, this younger generation, they just there is. Uh, they fighting for their life out there, Angel. Listen, they, the it's beautiful that they have a lack of shame. Yeah. But also, I'll be like, maybe some of it might be nice. <laughs> Listen, just pick up a little bit. Just having little. shame prevented us from doing a lot of things. Oh my gosh, yes, shame it is did. gone. All right, so for our next story. Um, this was interesting. This went crazy viral on Twitter. Uh, this girl tweeted intuitively, how will my date go? All right. And then she posted the text message um, and with the caption, LOL, never mind. This is him. I'll be on my way in a few. Her. Okay. Limk when you need my address. He said, oh, uh, I had no idea I was supposed to pick you up. She <laughs> said, are you joking? He said, no, what's your address or not? She said, that's okay. Enjoy your buddy's birthday weekend. And he said, not me with a whole car packed for a picnic, but all right. So she had posted this to show that I guess men are not, uh, what's that word? We start with the C chivalrous uh -huh. enough to ask for, to come pick you up anymore. And much to her chagrin, the internet took the Twitter, took the opposite side which was, why are you giving your address out to a man on the first date? And one of my favorite things about the internet is when a person is 100%, even though it's happened to me, 100% certain that everybody will be on their side <laughs> and, then, and the opposite is true. Nobody was like, you go girl. She woke up and she tweeted, oh, I just woke up. This went crazy because she was just looking at the mentions and the retweets. And then after she went down, she went protected tweets. She's like, oh wait, y'all disagree said, oh, with no. me. Oh no, you talk her bad about, no, no. I don't, yeah, if this is because of online dating, because you don't have references. That's what I'm saying. The game is, you, this ain't 1945. It is not where, you know, people already know where you live before you went out on a date with them. Now is a, you are meeting a complete stranger. Yes. 
stranger. Now, I mean, you may eat his butt on the first date, but he cannot know where you live. Right. These he, are two separate things. Very much so. The eat your butt thing, that could easily be rectified, brushing your teeth, using rectified. bleach. Hey, hey yo. Hey, all right, all right. <laughs> Good nice. Josh. That's 30 year old Josh. He a little yeah. bit more seasoned oh, now. Yeah, Come on. Took, he took picking his second. spots. He's picking his spots. Um, because he got that girl with him. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, you and or with a pill, you know, there's mm -hmm. many things that could. OK, that was a bad choice. Want to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about Love Thing with Punky Johnson, a brand new podcast from Sirius XM and Kevin Hart's LOL Radio. You know who Punky Johnson is, right? She's a hilarious comedian who did stand up. She was on SNL. She was on Love Life. You remember Love Life, the season two with CP? She was the hilarious sister on Love Life. Well, her and her homegirl Dicey got an amazingly hilarious podcast coming you know they're they're highly unqualified to give advice on matters of the heart but still they are and that's why it's so funny so everything relationships love all things steamy they're gonna be talking about it so make sure to follow the show on sirius xm apple podcast spotify wherever you get your podcast that's punky johnson love thing sirius xm kevin hart's lol radio check it out all right peace but if you mess with somebody crazy, that's all uprooting your whole life. You got to move. You got to get a warrant, uh, not a warrant, a uh, uh, restraining order. That's Listen. A lot of things you got to do if things go wrong. 1,000%. This is why Uber and Lyft are there. If you don't have a car, where we have, we're going to Applebee. Well, I guess probably not Applebee's, but I don't mind Applebee's. <laughs> I I like wherever you take somebody you on a first date. I'm going with some Applebee's after this. Yeah. Hush now. Jesus. Uh, we going down to Finney's. Damn. I'll meet you. What time are you going to meet there? Seven o'clock? I'll be Perfect. there at seven o'clock. But, uh, and also, and also, if you don't want that, then it should be communicated. I imagine, hey, I'm actually the type of person who w would like to be picked up. Is that because it didn't seem like the dude was averse to it? Mm -hmm. He's just probably going based on his other dates, like, oh, I thought we was just going to meet at the park. I guess you have a picnic at a, at a park. I thought we were just gonna meet there, like, and for her to be like, "Nope, enjoy your birthday." First of all, that's a that's a relationship. Red flag. No, no, like, uh, you make a mistake with your wife, you like, "Nope, enjoy your brother's birthday or your friend's birthday, whatever." Like, I caught you on a first date. Like, he's probably just like, "Well, that was dumb. I'm finna just eat the sandwich and go on about my day." But that's what everybody think. Everything's a goddamn on red flag. Everything's Versus a red flag. Everything's a gotcha. Versus. Sometimes people do things different than you. It doesn't mean because they do it different than you that they are wrong in how they do it. It's just y'all don't know each other well enough to know preferences. You know what, Angel? I'm going to say this. Say it, Kevin. A lot of my single homegirls, they be like, I'm just not dating no more. I just need a break from the whole thing. If these were the type of occurrences you would be dealing with, I'd be like, you know what? I am I don't want to. I don't even want to do this. I'm just going to go to work, have fun with my friends. My friends of both sexes travel. I could see myself being like, I'm going to remove my, I, I can now understand. I'm going to remove myself from the situation because this whole thing is irritating. Just reading this, I would be so irritated. Yeah. Like, I didn't even have a chat. Why would you expect that of me? We ain't even talk about that. That's not the dating norm. I don't think from what Twitter was saying that people who are dating is like, it is not normal to pick a woman up on the first date anymore. You meet at the place for safety, right? Because you don't know that person. But if that happened, I'd be like, you know what? I'm just single. I'm I just going to work on myself. I'm just going to beat my meat and watch my shows. I'm not doing none of this stuff. You know stuff. what? There needs to be a date nap called the 1950s. <laughs> that's what needs to happen. A date nap where everybody understands that's on this app. We are doing things in a more traditional manner. Courting. Yes, we are. That's what it should be called. Courting. Get on the horn, Angel. Uh, somebody make me the app. I'm going to own it. Mine. <laughs> TM. Trademark. Boom. <laughs> so that these type of things that a lot of women, because it's mostly women that hold on to these old school shivery ways. And I'm not saying it's wrong to that for that to be your standard. Right. But if you are delusional enough to believe that that is every man's standard that you come across yeah. that is in 2023, you are only doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> and if that's not something that you like, and if that is such a deal breaker, these are all things that I feel like you have to put out first. How would you not have to have this conversation? Especially when it's, especially with chicks out here eating booty holes now. Eating buttholes. They, uh, obviously there are a lot of different standards out here <laughs> that are acceptable. And you got to make sure y'all on the first page before you start calling things a red flag. Because I would think 
booty hole eating is a red flag, and that's why he did not call her back. She didn't even mind eating his butt. What she minded is he didn't hit her back after he that. He probably thought that was a red flag. Like, girl, you was crazy. <laughs> that tickled really? like crazy, but I can't be he with said, you. if you ate my booty hole, how many booty holes has been on that lip? You might have came here with butt pre-butt on your lip. Absolutely, pre-butt is there. Pre-butt is on your lip. 20 butt holes, at least a dozen, a baker's dozen, 13. <laughs> Butt holes on her lips. <laughs> and now you done put a man butt on my butt. Mm, or maybe on his lips. He probably kissed her. You can't kiss after eating butt, can she, you? He probably kissed her. She probably kissed him before she ate With the booty. With pre-butt? With pre-booty. And he probably got weirded out and was like, see, I can't do this. You thought I was feeling you? This nigga a munch. She said, no. Hey, yo! She said, I'm the munch. And I'm going to munch at your butthole. So I do think when it comes to... And listen, I am someone who doesn't know what the hell she's talking about, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. <laughs> when has that ever stopped us before? <laughs> when has it stopped us? We it's got never... the, uh, much of the story is in, in that article. I saw a comment one day and I want to hear what you say. It's like, I love here's the thing, but they don't always be fully informed. We read a couple articles. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. I purposefully come in here with ignorance <laughs> at the top of my agenda. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I it's come that. here with ignorance as what I'm going to share. <laughs> The joke comes first. The knowledge comes. You it's the not truth? even on the list. Go to NPR. We are here for ridiculousness. <laughs> I'm not a journalist. And if you're getting your news from me, you're the problem. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, even though I know nothing about dating in 2023, mm -hmm. what I have heard as a being someone who gets to hear the rants and the complaints of a lot of single women. Yeah. I feel like there is a, a, a way to finesse finding out the standards of the person that you are trying to date and also seeing if they're okay with the standards that you have. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes a compromise. I really don't understand why she couldn't feel comfortable. And maybe maybe she, not to talk about the woman, maybe she broke. If the picnic is the first date and she's <laughs> like, I don't want to go no place where I might have to pay for my own meal. <laughs> Maybe she was like, I can't afford no Uber, no Lyft. Oh. My account's in the negative. <laughs> I can't do it. And I'm not riding a bike and sweating out my press. So maybe, uh, listen, maybe that's the case. But I, I do. I feel for single ladies and gals. I mean, ladies and guys, because I don't know how y'all doing it. I, I Listen, being on the Internet, searching for topics all the time, I see stuff like this all the time. This just some of the stuff be so wild. And it helps me. Even if I were struggling in my marriage, I seeing this, I'd be like, I would rather work it out <laughs> because I'm at this point, I've committed, I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. We started then we were 20 or 16. I've committed 24 years of my life to this woman. Ain't no way mm -hmm. I'm either dating somebody who A, thinks eating butt on the first date is okay, mm -hmm. or B, gets upset because she didn't say, I expect you to pick me up and then got mad. Mm -hmm. Imagine having these two dates back to back. I'll be right back at Melissa. I know what we said. <laughs> no. I know what we said. I know you called me no good and a useless Listen, method, but that could be my little pet name. <laughs> I would rather be unhappy with you than happy with somebody else because I can't be out here in this world. I The game has changed so long since we was dating, Angel. Uh, I don't even know if it's even, it, it even slightly resemble. I wouldn't be, I'd be the worst today. And then I got to contend with people who might be a fan of mine or all this oh, and stuff. Oh, you definitely gonna be dating fans. Oh, I'm out. You definitely, you definitely go in the dating fans. That me, <laughs> I'm not gonna be dealing with this. I would be a solo traveler. I would be going to Vietnam by myself. I would not be doing it. I, oh. I would, I would cringe. I loved your video. Goodbye. <laughs> Do I, it. The moment you've heard of me, you've seen me before. Mm -hmm. See you later. Well, big gulps, huh? Yeah. <laughs> See you later. I'm out of here. Good listen. You definitely. Hey, Marcus can only tell me things and tell me I'm wrong and tell me what to do, even though I don't listen sometimes because he's Marcus and because he's mine. Jill if, Scott said it, Angel. If you could tell me what to do, if you could tell me what to do. And if you can't tell me what to do, if you can't tell me what to do. Can't nobody else tell me what to do. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Nobody. I'm running. You not going to be a man after I finish with you. <laughs> you going to be a little boy. You going to be a yes man dealing with me. And that's unattractive. That makes my coochie lips go back inside of itself. So 
I feel you. Like I'm gonna need Marcus to stay on the the the, the righteous path, which he does very well with me. And uh, we just gonna have to take this to the grave because Listen. I don't, I, I can't imagine, I, I cannot imagine as much of a loud and opinionated and alpha female that I am. Anyone thinking that they are going to get me to submit in Can any way? Can you imagine way. if you met one of the uh, alpha males who who like uh, the the Quan Dietrich? You stupid. That's <laughs> what you are. You stupid. I'm not dealing with you. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, if eating booty hole is... What if the man was like, hey, first day, Angel, you know women eat butt, so get to it. I'll be like, well, well my dog Lottie doesn't care what she licks, so if you want that on your butt hole, Put that's about it. Put butt on your butt. Put your fish. <laughs> She'll go to town. She will go to pound town with you. Speciality. Listen, there ain't no way. There's just no way. There is too much competition. It's too much confusion. That's yeah. what it is. It's the confusion of it all. And God is not the author of confusion. And listen, and I don't read the book. Okay? I don't read the book that is confusion. <laughs> huh? So I don't know who authored it, but I don't want it. I feel bad for y'all. All right, moving on. Please. Patreon producer Clara Jenkins says, we're going to talk about Angela Bassett's honorary Oscar. CNN reports Angela, Angela Bassett, Bassett to receive an honorary Oscar. Uh huh. Uh, the two time nominee is set to receive an honorary Oscar at the 2023 Governor's Award, the Academy of Motion Pictures and Arts and Sciences, announced Monday. Uh, they knew they had to get right with us. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like it. Now, not that she's not deserving of it, but don't give me a, a my bad. If you give her a my bad Oscar, give her the one that Leonardo DiCaprio got. My bad, we didn't give you the one, so we're going to give you one. this one for The Revenant, regardless of your acting in it and the natural light. Give her a my bad, oopsie, real one for some work she's done. Don't give her an honorary, because do that even count towards the EGOT? Yes. Do Hell it? Yes. I don't care. It's I want her to win. to get an honorary than to get a real one. I want one. her to get it for her work on screen. I she done care. had enough Oscar worthy performances. This is the thing. No, 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 no. Yes, Angela yes, 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 yes. Angela Bassett is not going to be in a boring white people movie. And that's the only way she can get an Oscar that's for Revenant. True. She is going to do the movies that black people like. Angela, don't be doing those obscure. It, everything seems like the coloring is bluish colored. You know what it is. <laughs> it's uh, that's Casey Affleck movie, yes. Manchester by the Sea. Yes, people are in neutral tones. Oh, Nobody has a fresh haircut. Everything is scraggly. She's not going to do that type of movie because she's got elegance and class. Angela's not going to have sausage fingers, somebody said. Absolutely. She's not doing that type of stuff. So if they try to wait until she does a movie that the Oscars will even pay attention to. I'm with you. She'll be 80. 90 years old with you know it's just not gonna happen so this is reparations and i'll take it hey this is reparation oscars come on it is a <clears throat> truly pay me what you owe me and she deserves it and while yes it sucks that it's not for a specific performance the fact of the matter is she's undeniable we know this woman can act anything she's extremely expressive her emotional depth goes very deep and um, I'm glad that they were like, we're not going to wait like we did for Denzel. Yeah. We are going to make it right, right now. Now, let me tell you what. Somebody asked Angel, uh, could you explain why it's harder to get an honorary one? I would love for you to do that, and then I'll tell you my thoughts. Well, think about it. Honorary one, you're not competing against other people. I didn't even know this was a thing until this happened. Oh, yeah. Sidney Poitier received an honorary. Like, it's kind of like your lifetime. It's kind of like a, how can I put it? It's kind of like a lifetime achievement award mm. kind of a sort is or think of it like an honorary doctorate got it your work has to be so magnificent overall that the um organization which is the academy of what motion, motion pictures, pictures and sciences, sciences ampus ampus has to uh believe that y your work alone regardless of what competition regardless of what anybody else is doing yeah is deserving of an Oscar. Most people, they have an Oscar worthy performance, yeah. but the rest of their work is, is just okay, right? Um, and there are few, I feel like there are very few actors, even actors who have earned Oscars that would deserve an honorary Oscar. Like you, you could say maybe like a Meryl Streep. Yep. She's someone 
you look at her work, film after film Prolific. after film, she is doing something that a lot of people aren't doing. And Angela Bassett is one of those women. And I do, I really stand by what I said. Because of the type of films that Angela usually is in, the Oscars are not going to really acknowledge her. Unless they, we, we got to have somebody else black to write about that's dead. <laughs> because that's when, those are the black movies that let a black person who about to die died or Jamie did got his for Ray. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm X. He didn't get it for Malcolm X. That's where they, uh, that's where they cheated him yep. for Denzel Washington. So they said, or slave you? movie. That's a, that's about something that Cause that's happen. what he got. Uh, Denzel got his supporting. I mean, glory ain't a slave movie, but it well, was it's a war movie. Yeah. It's a war movie set during the civil war. Absolutely. Uh, Hattie McDaniel got one for, um, uh, 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 it's not gone with the wind, but, it's, uh, it wasn't Gone with the Wind. No, it was, um, it's uh, is it um, it was a Mammy and Gone with the Wind. Ah, Look I was you. like, it wasn't. It wasn't Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Um, um Lupita got one f for Twelve, 12 Years, Years a Slave. Slave, and I'm not dismissing them. It's just like those I think people ones, forget those white people recognize. There is an, and I didn't know this as a kid, but there is an Oscar type of movie yes. that is a certain type of film. Or role and it's released at a certain time. Yes. The Oscar winning films that are like, this is our push, October through like Christmas, usually late September through like Christmas, not the blockbuster movies, not the summer smashes. Right. And now they'd be on Amazon Prime. I mean, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, like that Casey Affleck one. I, that was, I, 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 I could tell so, from the cover, oh I, I couldn't God. do it. It looked like sandpaper. I was like, what a burlap? Angel, this They should have the called it burlap by the sand. That's how dry <laughs> it looked. I don't, I've don't. i always been very uh, anti-watch the Oscars. A lot of the movies that come through the Oscars, are they have really good film festival runs. It's not about their... their um, Politicking. Yeah, world, yes. It's not about their world premiere as far as an inside of theaters. Yeah. It's very much so being at Tribeca, being at yes. Cannes Festival, being at Sundance. Yes. In a lot. In white. Oh, you definitely got to be Jamie Lee Curtis got a, okay, we owe you one. I don't know why they felt like they owed her one. They didn't owe her one, but because it was weird and she had hot dog fingers <laughs> and a blunt haircut, they were like, this is this is what it is. This I'm smart. I is, hated that she got that. Still. I didn't, listen, that movie was way too long. It I had love some, that movie. I did not love it. It I was long, though. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. it yeah. But I also knew as soon as I watched it, I said, oh, white people are jacking off to this. <laughs> oh, my God. They are jacking off because there's confusion. Why are we here? And that's all they need is a why are we here? <laughs> or are you a dead black person or are you a slave? Okay. Or are you a criminal? Denzel yeah. got his for training day. Are you playing against type? No, is what that, they say. No, that was we owe you. We, Denzel Washington in training day was great. That is not what people look at and say it's Oscar time. But he did play against his type of movie though. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. that's not why he got that Oscar. No, no, I totally agree. Yeah, no, Denzel Washington. But they Washington, love a good against type. Denzel Washington was amazing in Training Day. That's I will watch Training Day again. But you can't tell me that was better than him as Malcolm X. You <laughs> made that up. God bless you. Thousand percent. And I still believe, and I'm gonna say it every time we talk about the Oscars. Eddie Murphy was robbed for Jimmy Early. He should have won for Jimmy Early, mm -hmm. and they gave it to Alan Arkin. And guess what he was in? Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, oh, I believe it was that weirder, God. weirder sin movie. Just Little Miss Sunshine, I enjoyed, and I knew it was going to have Oscar run. Yeah. I did enjoy that one. That one made me laugh out loud. There was a hospital scene that made me scream. I can't remember what happened, but somebody died. Yeah, the dad died. Did he? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine. Yep, two thousand seven. Um, Did Jeffrey Wright won one. No. Nah, hell no. I don't even think he's been nominated. I feel like he might finesse one in... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, say maybe he won't be nominated. Because he was just in Asheville City. Was he? Yeah. I, didn't see I thought what's that is in no put nobody black in his stuff. He's definitely in Asheville City. He wasn't in the poster. Also, I don't think white people have to put black people in stuff if that ain't your movie. The point is, not that Wes Anderson needs to have black people. It's that for for black people should be in movies where black people would be. And Wes Anderson can make movie after movie without a black person, but a black person doesn't get that opportunity. It's just weighted too heavily. Yeah. I don't believe you need to make people do like uh, your boy from uh, Scorsese. He make Italian mob film after Italian mob film. 
They did not rock with no black people. They're not black people in their movies there's, like that. I don't that. think there's a background that's black. They don't do that. But they, in that culture, they hated black people. The Italians, you watch The Sopranos, he was big racist. Now, I don't, but the point I don't is, think it's past tense. But yeah, huh? I said, I don't know if it's fully it, past tense. Yeah, I think it's you still said current. they oh, hated. In uh, the, in, they, <laughs> if it is still True. a current thing. <laughs> to my knowledge, could be wrong. True, you're right. So I'll take, I, listen, it ain't for me to take or not take. I am happy for Angela regardless uh, Angela Bassett is actually a very sweet soul. She is a love of Jesus. Huh? She was in that Toyota. She was in that Toyota. Anytime I see her, she gives me a big old hug. Um, and she is deserving of any award they give her. We know what it is. Yeah. The Oscars knows what it is. Now give her a BT award. But she ain't going. She ain't going. Now let, let me tell you. <laughs> now let me tell you where Angela Bassett is doing right. I just seen an article where she is the highest paid TV star. Right now, our black woman, $450,000 per episode yeah. for starring in and executive producing uh, 911. 911. And there's a spin off 911 Lone Star or something Lone like that. Lone Star, yeah. Uh, Is it uh, ABC? Uh, I Fox, think it's Fox. It's oh. Fox. Lone Star takes place in uh, Texas. Oh, well, obviously, it's Lone Star. But uh, I remember uh, one of either me or Bree Shaw for that. But, anyways, Angela Bassett has worked in this industry for decades and any of her white counterparts that have worked as long as she has would have whatever award they wanted yeah low-key while we talk about patty labelle ha have angela bassett play her and just play the music from tina and the karaoke version of that probably would have went over better than patty That's labelle what somebody not said. we would have taken lip syncing i wanted what i got or a tribute if you're going to have patty labelle then you gonna have Patty LaBelle. If you gonna have her, then have her. You gonna have her. Don't start setting all these standards. Oh, she needed to know the lyrics. <laughs> no, she don't. She don't know. Somebody she, said Patty LaBelle don't be knowing the lyrics to her own song. Of she course does not. We, I look forward to it. getting to that age. <laughs> I look forward Can to you, being one margarita and you performing it. You don't even know the word. What? What? <laughs> Give it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa! You didn't even want what you didn't even remember. <laughs> In this hypothetical, you didn't even remember the word margarita. Yeah. Put your hands together. <laughs> ha! They were like, "You don't sing in this song." Hey, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Come on, background dancers, do the show us. Give me one, huh? <laughs> Give me two, what? What? <laughs> Give me who? Single, uh, huh? And siete. <laughs> Mm, oh, 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 where are all my Latino brothers and sisters? <laughs> Viva la raza! I Give look me one margarita, I'm gonna eat your butt on the yes. first day. You out here eating ass? <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I see the bumps. Mm, ow, hey, hey. That's why I brought my own mic. Do the bow tech. I look forward <laughs> to it. I look forward to getting to that age. And I love, listen, I understand. We are trying to give tribute to a woman who was prolific, still is, has uh, has influenced so many people in how they perform. Patti LaBelle didn't ask herself to do the tribute. No, she didn't. BET asked her. So when you ask Patti LaBelle, expect to get Patti LaBelle non-knowing lyrics self. And she can't turn it down. No, they were like, she should have turned it down. I will never. What? Turn down anything. <laughs> I will not. You will suffer along with me not as I get that check. Anything? I'm not going. If somebody, people like Angel, VT Awards should have asked you to perform. Let them have asked me to perform one margarita. Do you think I'm ready to give a BET quality performance? Hell no. But, but do you think I wouldn't? By the way, when is the music video? You know what? Because I want you to shoot it when I'm available. Okay. So look. I can do this. Hmm. If you get hmm. one shot of me Listen, doing this. Listen, you better this. be glad we almost shot it for my birthday. Whew. We almost did. Oh, the did. grace of God, a sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now don't hold it back for me, but what, what's what's going on with it? Because I know that's going to give it another jump. Well, we have been going back and forth. We had, I, no lie, probably 11 different meetings with record companies. I didn't even know there was that many record labels. Because there's, there's independent I thought they're all ones. under UMG. They, they're all everywhere. UMG so or we, Warner. We met with big ones and we met with a lot of independent ones. We met with a lot of foreign ones. Did you meet with Pebbles? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, do you not want to rap four or what? 
Pebbles will give you a rap. Do you have give it to Little Marcus? She's offering a Lexus RX or GX or LX. I mean, she might give it to you. She gonna take every everything. penny for every margarita from everything. for behind the music. Angel got a Lexus, <laughs> I'll be like, and that was it. My song is everywhere. One margarita now. made seven billion dollars. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Lexus no longer even, they don't even make that truck no more. <laughs> it's used. She got me a used. We went to CarMax and she said, pick out whatever one you want. One margarita was sold as a song to Don Julio and now the owner of the rights gets $7 million in royalties and it goes to Pebbles. And they just like, no, oh, the Lexus, the Lexus. So we have just been in, just trying to figure out what we want. And then also real making sure, you know, people will play in your face. Oh, yeah, they will. They and think I, you're dumb. And, and the, I'm going to tell you why years. you're in a great position, Angel. You don't need the deal. Oh, hell no. And that's the best bargaining position because you can do whatever you want by yourself. A lot of times the record label's biggest thing, especially now, you don't have the money to do it or you don't understand how this game but works. But the thing is, the money they're going to be throwing out is at most $40,000 for exclusivity for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. Dang. And then the splits are going to be like 95-5. Like they, it can't be, oh yeah, no. No, we we definitely not low like that. We they Originally, they were coming to the table with low stuff, and I was like, I could go talk about God dang on a uh, period panties. <laughs> Uh-huh. I've seen in those in the real, store, by the way. Uh, and they're great. I love period panties. In a real 60 second reel and get paid what you ask what you telling me. They like, oh you have you have uh <laughs> standards? Oh, and splits in licensing. It's it's so funny because I don't necessarily need it. It does sound fun. I be talking cash crazy in these meetings. Well, if I'm gonna take it, it got to be worthwhile. I and I say, I don't if you're here to waste my time, we can go ahead and leave right now. You say that you don't you don't email that ahead of time. You no, sit down I and say, say that. It. I say because we talk first for the proposal. So when you send this proposal, uh -huh. all this stuff you saying to me now better be reflected in the numbers that you're saying. What you said, now, Angel? It is. It's fun to be that person in the. Meeting. I would imagine. I mean, don't tell me you could see this big person on this song, but then when I look at the budget for the remix of the song, that don't even cover their session fee. Look at her at session fee, Joshy. Women are smart. I be oh, believe listen, it or not. <laughs> listen, I be talking some tough stuff. What do they be looking like when you tell them crazy stuff? They're just like, yeah, no, because we see it. <laughs> they love a good yeah, yeah, no. no. We see what you're saying, yeah. And then they they kind of because this is what's crazy. I'm gonna give y'all a little insight because this is Patreon only. Say bonus, bonus. Ooh, remember how we said this was a uh, bonus episode that we made public. Well, this little section that we got here, we we, we just got to keep it for, for the Patreon only, guys. Sorry, sorry about that. If you want to check it out, though, please feel free to join in the, the link of the bio. It's 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 down there. But, yeah, this was just one of those things that it's just it's, it's for Patreon only. Sorry, I, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. Hopefully see you there, though. All right. Uh, we actually got this a couple times in the in the Patreon docket. Kanisha Arnold says the approval, the approval, and I didn't know this at all until I saw this in the docket. Tell me. The approval of oh, distribution I of lab-generated meat. I saw this before the docket. Yeah. I did not see this. After I saw this in the docket, uh, I saw somebody like, y'all, the, the submarine was a distraction because what they really snuck in when y'all was going by the submarine was this lab-grown meat being approved. And by I was like, like FDA, I though, saw, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been FDA approved. Mm -hmm. so, I saw this before the submarine. People were shoot. DMing it to me. My friends were. I'm not were. surprised, though. Hold on. Where's the article at? I haven't thought so, the chicken hasn't been lab grown. I so thought basically, it was. That's what I was saying. They got lab grown fruits that we're eating all the time. Yeah, broccoli man made. None. So apparently what the lab grown means is that it ain't a chicken egg um, thing. They take the cell mm -hmm. from the chicken mm -hmm. and so amino acids, this and that, a little paprika. There you go. And, and they make a chicken breast. And they make a ch and they grow a chicken. Let me read you the article. Soon Americans are going to be able to try chicken that comes directly from chicken cells rather than well a chicken. On Wednesday, the USDA gave Upside Foods and Good Meat the green light to start producing and selling their lab-grown or cultivated chicken products in the U United States. Don't run to the supermarket yet. It's going to be a while before you can buy cell-based meat in stores, though you should be able to get a taste of the restaurant, taste at a restaurant sooner. What is it? In a nutshell, lab-grown meat or cultivated or cell-based meat is meat that's developed from animal cells and grown with the help of nutrients like amino acids in massive bioreactors. This happens in a production facility that looks like a 
like a brewer, brewery. Mm. I, I hate that word. <laughs> when you picture it, don't think of people in white coats and hairnets peering through microscopes and petri dishes, but instead people in white coats and hairnets, hairnets wandering between giant vats. When the meat is ready, companies collect it from the bioreactors and move it along the processing line. Good meat's protein looks like looks a lot like minced chicken when extracted, said Andrew Noyes, head of global communications and public affairs at Good Meat Parent Company, Eat Jest. So I'll continue on and give you the whole thing. Uh, for one thing, growing meat from cells means that people can eat meat without having to slaughter animals. Upside Foods explains that cells it gathers from fertilized chicken eggs are stored in its cell bank and can be used for at least 10 years. Animal cells can come from animal biopsies. Oh, shoot. Or even feathers. Blech. Ugh. That just sounds nasty. That means they can just get a dead chicken and harvest the cells and grab a feather. Mm. There are environments considerations as well. Agriculture, particularly animal agriculture, is responsible for a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions, which contribute to climate change. Overhauling the system could ease the burden on the planet. I was just about to ask, is this vegetarian? No. Unlike plant-based meats, like the products can be made by Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat. Cultivated meat uses animal cells, so it's not considered vegetarian. I think this is disgusting, but at the same time, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I eat that would possibly be, if I really knew how it was made, <laughs> have close to the same goddamn old process. Absolutely. Um, I, I do believe because we as a people, especially in America, have not calmed down with our meat consumption, <laughs> that this is where it was going to be headed to. So it, I... While it would have been nice had we been able to correct our behavior <laughs> so that we could just have regular chickens. We're going to eat this planet out of house and home. Yeah. So we can have regular chickens, you know, be uh, killed and, and cut up and we eat off of that because we are like, nah, we we are meat eating country. This is where we were going to be headed to anyway. And let me tell you what. Let this be cheaper than. Uh, non lab grown meat, which probably is their whole point. Poor people gonna be eating this. Listen, we eat the what? I don't know what those nuggets are. Listen. I wish it was lab grown. You know, meat. I don't know what that is. We took we was on the road taking the boys on the HBCU tour, and Josiah swears he don't like chicken. So we go to Boja or Zaxby's to get chicken. He's like, I don't want any chicken. So we're like, okay, we're gonna go to McDonald's. It's the only two places here. We got to get back on the road. We go to McDonald's, and you know what he orders? Chicken nuggets. Of course. And I'm like, you said you don't like chicken? He was like, well, this ain't real chicken. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is just McDonald's chicken nuggets. I don't know what is in this, but I like this. And that's what's going to happen. Like, poor people, if we were poor in the in 1980s, if this was an option and real chicken was $4 a pound and this was $1.50 a pound, 1,000%. Without a shadow of a doubt, or if this was sold in Wick, the kids got Wick chicken. Oh, this is the first place is going is Wick. Listen, they gonna go for that government contract, mm -hmm. and when you ain't got a lot of money, you live in a food desert. You don't have a lot of choices, and well, I or know become vegan. My, or become, <laughs> well, vegan's more expensive. It can, it definitely can be. No, you can get some cheap vegan stuff. I mean, you're gonna die, but <laughs> my mom would have been bu buying this. Hand over fist. I mean, they would have taken her WIC check every month if this was available. When so I, I think some people are not going to have a choice. If you pour and that's who they're going to target, you're going to be eating this. I remember eating powdered eggs. Oh. Had you ever had powdered eggs? I've had powdered egg. No, no. You cooked at your own house is where no. you mix the powder with the water. Mm -mm. No. You put it and you cook it like what a scramble. What is that really then? I don't no, that's what I'm saying. Now, granted, what I ate as a kid does not a reflection of what I eat now. There's a lot of things that I ate as a kid. Like, you ain't going to catch me drinking Kool-Aid. I'm just not. I was just thinking about that the other day. My kids do not drink Kool-Aid. My kids don't even know what the hell it is, much less drink it. We had it so much. All the time. It was always in the fridge. All the time. Like I our family it. rule, whoever drinks the last, immediately make another pitcher. And we never <laughs> ran out. The only way Kool-Aid is going in my sister, I got to be in some hot, either tropical place. And they're like, we've got drunken Kool-Aid drinks. Yeah. That's the only way. But not just for, oh, I'm going to have a sandwich and some Kool-Aid. So there's a lot of things. I used to eat uh, Vienna sausages. I don't know oh. what that is. But I know we had them a lot. I like a good Spam and Subi. Oh, Jojo People used that. to eat Spam. Spam and Subi is a good time. Spam, 
Fried Spam? People eat bologna still. Still. I don't know what all Loud is in Loud at it. brethren. So. Calm. Safe. And it. It sucks. Again, that due to overpopulation and our overconsumption of meat, that this is where we're at is just being like bump, bump, creating a chicken. We're just going to create the meat that comes from it so that y'all can eat that because apparently y'all can't give it up. But luckily, I'm not that I don't consume that much meat. So this doesn't affect me as much. Yeah, I was just I made this video the other day about I was trying to eat Beyond Meat burgers and it just I couldn't finish the last third of it. It just tastes like science. Those aren't even that good for you. No, listen. When you look at the nothing's really good for you in America. Oh no. The no, amount of stuff that goes into meat, beyond meat, unless you're growing the food, either animal or vegetable yourself, mm -hmm. that's the only thing. And most of us don't have the ability or the land to create a sustainable garden or farm. Right. To grow and harvest our own meat. Sustainability ain't no joke. Like no. to be self sustainable ain't no goddamn going way. It, it's it, in in The Last of Us, it was only the, uh, the two men who had that whole neighborhood with electric fence. They were the only ones who were able to be self sustained. But the, the, the majority of us, we are subject to the USDA. And listen, we live in a capitalist society. Money wins. If you All tell the time. me, I don't have to worry about these chickens, all I got to do is take a sale. From there, I can create chicken meat, and I don't got to harvest these animals. I don't got to worry about PETA coming and trying to slaughter. There's no videos. There's Everybody, not, yeah. It's a. Uh, have you seen that movie? Uh, uh, a Mervin. Oh my God! The the guy who directed the um Parasite. What about and Bong then, Hugh what, Kim? Bong Hugh. I was about to say it's an Asian person, but what about him? <sighs> he made another movie about a train. Spoiler alert. I oh, know. uh Snowpiercer. <laughs> Snowpiercer. Oh, the train to go real, real fast. Yes. Yeah, he did that one. He did that, that one, one got a lot of white people in it, though, right? Yeah. Chris okay. Pine? Chris Pine or the other Chris? Anyway, the point was, spoiler alert, if you're going to watch this movie, just skip this podcast. The <laughs> What they was eating was people ground up. It was like uh, that other movie. And the point is, if you ain't got no money... And it can be mass consumed for cheap, Chris Evans. Then it's gonna be in the it's gonna be in the world, and it that's is. why I was just like, I didn't even hear this coming. I didn't know this was like. Remember when cloning was a thing? We was all the sheep, and then they Dolly gonna, the sheep, Dolly, and then mad cow disease and stuff like that. Like, I didn't know this was even on the horizon. So when people were like, "Oh, it got approved," I was like, "Oh, it ain't get approved." And then I looked, I was like. Oh no! It definitely did. It's get always this type of stuff. Is listen, I, oh, this oh, it is was a, bugs. This is on topic, but off topic. Okay. Went to VidCon. I sat in on a panel in the industry track about AI. Mm. I've never been more frightened in my life. Really? Oh man, it's yeah. bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. So like this whole making a chicken, I'm like it. This this is where we're going. There. It's so funny. The reason why it was scary is because, one, I'm watching the manipulation of how you're trying to manipulate me to believe a certain thing. Yeah. The man, there's one AI company called Forever Voices. And um, this is how the, the, the creator or founder, CEO of the company said, he was like, you know, my dad passed away suddenly and the grieving process was really hard. And I used this, my software, to create an AI version of my dad so that I could have conversations with him. And it was so helpful in the grieving process. So already I feel the manipulation. You're trying to, you're trying to connect this to the emotion of people and using grief and loss as a way to hook them, right? Now, mind you, the first thing they put out on the market though is uh, the, they turned an influencer, major uh, white girl, um, her name is uh, Karen, <laughs> right? <laughs> So they have something called Karen AI where she basically can be your girlfriend and you communicate to her via like voice. You know how, you know, when I talk yeah. to Melissa, it's always voice memo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. And the conversation happens like fast. She's like, yep. you could be like, hey, Karen, babe, I'm going a, I'm to a talk to you after this. I'm getting ready to shoot. Here's the thing with Angel. And she'll be like, oh, my goodness. Tell her I said hi. Hopefully. You all have a great show. I know the stage crew would love it. Like. That quick. Like the conversation. She would say the stage crew though? Potentially, yeah. As she learns and grows? 
Yeah, because she would be able to calculate. You are Kevin Fredericks. Here's the thing is a podcast that you do with Angel and Josh. Your your following is called the stage crew. She basically is able to give you the type of information. So the, the example he gave, he gave a real life example. He talked to Karen AI on the way to VidCon. He was like, hey, Karen, on my way to VidCon, I'm actually going to talk about you. And she's like, oh, man, I wish I was there with you. VidCon is so great. I know that there's so many useful panels. So he didn't say this is what VidCon is. She was able to gather the information fast. On what VidCon it's basically is. Jarvis, right? Always scanning the Internet, learning and, and growing and becoming smarter. Eventually, we're going to die because the robots are going to learn that humans are destroying the planet. Every movie happens. They kill us. And then the yes. sentient beings take over. Now, listen. You would have thought it was bad enough with just him. He goes, another CEO comes on. They are the ones that created the, he hates to call, is it deep fake or f fake deep? Deep fake. Deep fake. Deep fake. Okay. Deep fake. <laughs> fix, fix, move it around. Of uh, Tom Cruise, which oh, is the, yeah. the, which is probably the most popular deep fake. And his whole thing was, you know, uh, we can't determine to another person what is meaningful. Right. He was like, we're sitting here talking in person. Maybe the next time we talk is via Zoom, me and you. Right. And then, then the next time we talk over the phone, you're like, you remember the last time we were talking, you said such and such. And you don't remember which if you said it to me in person mm -hmm. or if you said it to me via Zoom. But both were meaningful connections. Right. Yeah. So to be able to create the AI version of someone and you have a meaningful interaction with them, you don't get to determine me as the someone out on the outside. Don't get to determine if that was meaningful or not just because it's AI. And he First was of all, brilliant what? salesman. Oh, that's why I said, I'm this falling is for terrible. it now. I'm like, Oh, and then this is what he really did. He was like, this is how he got us. He was like, what my what I feel is important is that you all own the AI. You own the the data, the biometrics that creates the AI ver version of you. You should always be able to own it. And I was like, oh, so you're trying to appease people who might be like, nah, because you're going to create. No, I'm going to ease your mind by being like, but it's yours. He was like, so now we could have if if the state of Martin Luther King Jr. allowed us to create an AI version of your him, dad my daddy and i was like we'll never approve it that's why i said in mm -hmm. the audience we won't he was like barack obama could interview martin luther king jr you could talk to your dad i don't need to you wouldn't they, were, they said they he would be like kevin you could have a conversation with your great great grandkids he was like, while you, we can't make an AI, he was like, we can't make an AI version of your great, great grandfather because there's not enough data in the world. He was like, but there's already enough data in the world to create you. I would love that. To create an AI version yes, of yourself? Yes, I want to live on forever. I said, I don't. When I'm dead, mourn me. Go back, get these video views up. I told Melissa that too. I, I'm joking. I was like, girl, when I, it, heaven forbid, if I go tomorrow, 40 years from now, you mourn me and you move on. That's Perfect. what grief is supposed to be. Grief is nothing but, uh, what did Vision say? Who was doggone AI. Yes. Vision. See, I've been quoting AI. Vision said grief, what is grief without love, except love persevering, but the AI made me feel sad. I knew he was a robot. Wanda doggone. Was, That's what they trying to create us into Wanda's. They, Wanda jacked off with that robot so much. When he died, she doggone created a whole AI town and was killing real people because her AI boyfriend got dead and she killed him. That's what they want us to become. AI, uh, we want to, they want us to become Wanda's to where we can't let go of the people who died because that is the natural process of life. And instead we talking to versions of them that really don't exist. People going to fall for that. Oh, I know. I, once if you I get somebody pitch, in, in grief, you are susceptible to do at the moment you lose somebody you love. What if you what if you didn't, though? No, my friend Wendell is dead. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to any version of him. Him dead. If Marcus dies, I'm just going to spray his cologne. That's the that's the most <laughs> I'm going to be able to do. I don't want to talk to that man. I'm going to watch old videos. That's the most. This is Listen. It changes the psychology of people. One thousand. This is why they. This is why Wally and all them future movies. We are just fat in in our own home. Ready Player One. Your whole world is. Uh, what was Meta trying to make? But it didn't work. The the metaverse, where yeah. you're just a, a, a avatar of yourself. 
Also, here's another thing they're going to start to use. It's unsafe. You go, you can get shot in America. What if you could go out and entertain yourself safely from the comfort of your own home, have a party with your friends, but you, you know, you're not going to get hurt and be like very black mirror, very black mirror. Also, I watched black mirror for the first time last night with Melissa. That show scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Well, that nigga had a, the astronaut nigga had the body and that nigga died. And that nigga. season did you watch? The most recent one? Oh, you haven't seen all of them? Nah, I just I, my they're, first episode. They're crazy from. Like <laughs> the parallels are just. I was like, are spot get on. this off my TV. I don't like it. I, listen, I watched the one where the, the two men, they couldn't figure out if they were gay because in the video game, they kept sleeping with each other. <laughs> they were like, is we gay or not? So they were like, okay, should we try it in the real world? They were like, ugh. That's hilarious. But in this video game, let's smash <laughs> two black men. I can't remember their names. But yeah, what I this is the only hope. I said we got to resist. I don't know if we can, but we got cuz people are like, well, it's hap- it's inevitable. And I'm like, no, nothing has to be inevitable. But the, death. the problem is they going to let us go. They going to be like, they going right. to be like, we're not getting ca- 40 year olds. But listen, no, no, no. This is okay. what gave me hope, Kevin. Give me hope, Angel, because I'm about to turn into a robot myself. My son, Marcus, he his best friend lives in Texas. She used to live out here. She lives in Texas. She introduced yes, Harp. She in- introduced him to her friends via online Discord and FaceTime and text groups to her friends that she goes to school with in Texas. One of the boys he became really good friends with. They both love YouTube. The boy is an animator. They got to meet for the first time at VidCon because yeah, cool. the boy flew in. Marcus was so excited to meet him in person. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is what I'm going to hold on to is that even though he has access to talk to that child whenever he wants to, they play video games with each other all the time. There was still something yeah. was an that he still? was, huh? It was in Anaheim? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Sorry. No, there, you interrupt any time, Josh. Okay. There was still something beautiful about or special to him about meeting this little Mexican boy from Texas. <laughs> for the And they kicked it the entire time. Met yeah. YouTubers and stuff. So I'm like... I don't know why they they keep saying this is not to remove that it's to yeah. um to compliment it and I'm like nah y'all trying to keep us from each other that's what I think it is I can't I just can't all right we love y'all Bye. Gin and Juice is live now make sure to pull up on them the link is in the Patreon have a good time with them enjoy we love y'all we will see you next week we'll put it in the Patreon when we will see y'all we got to figure it out God bless you gotta keep you we'll see you at the conference. Bye. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. Fire. Here's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.